last summer I had a call from Doug McDonald, who's the CEO of the Alamo, and he asked me about the cannon in the courtyard. You know, what are these cannon? Um, are they historic? And I told him that, yes, they're historic. They're cannons from the battle. And he talked about conservation. And so I said, I'll find out who can do that. And I already, already knew that it'd be A&M Conservation Lab because they worldwide work on artillery pieces and other things. So I talked to Dr. Jim Jobling and he said, I'm so happy you called because we want to have some sort of, <coughs> excuse me, some sort of relationship with um, the Alamo. The cannon conservation is a simple process. And basically the cannon goes into an electrolytic vat. So in simple terms, think of a steel vat and the vat's made out of steel, which is our anode. And the cannon hangs inside the vat and it's insulated from the side and it's in a liquid called sodium hydroxide, 5% solution, which is conductive to electricity. We then take a DC power supply and we run a current to the cannon and the electrons go to the cannon and they go through the cannon. And when they come out of the cannon to go into the sodium hydroxide, you get like a mini explosion and a little hydrogen bubble comes off. And the electron takes corrosion products, be it chloride or something else into the electrolyte across to the wall of the anode and you get another little explosion and an oxygen bubble bubbles off and the corrosion drops into the tank. So you pull all the corrosion out of your iron and you reduce the iron and you clean it. Now we monitor it on a weekly basis and we've got various charts we refer to and we know when it's clean. Basically we want to get down to well below 20 parts per million chlorides or salt. We then take the cannon, we put it in a large vat and we boil it in clean water and we reduce the chloride level to between five and 10 parts per million, which is very low and it's perfectly acceptable for uh, museum display or uh, long-term conservation. We then take the cannon out of the boiling rinse and it's 212 degrees because it's been boiled. And we coat it with a tannic acid solution, which blackens the gun. So think of a nice new firearm in the gun store. They turn it out of iron and then they blew it. The tannic acid in effect is bluing the cannon, it blackens it because it's tannin which is black and it makes a corrosion resistant chemical layer on the surface of the cannon. So if the cannon does corrode you get a little orange spot. Okay. Now once you've coated with tannic acid we let everything dry we then give it two or three coats of paint which is an industrial paint external so it's used to outdoor environment and the paint lasts five to ten years. Now that is in an ideal situation. So the cannon's sitting on display. But unfortunately, all of us love cannon. So whenever we walk past a cannon, we rub our hand down the length of the cannon. And I have seen cannon where the top of the cannon is flat at the muzzle because people have been rubbing their hands for 300 years and they've rubbed the metal away. Also, our hands are very acidic. So the acid in our fingers gets into the iron and it starts corroding. So we need to replace the paint every so often and we need to maintain it. There's been a lot of debate over it. Uh, for a long time it was called the 18 pounder because there was an 18 pounder at the Alamo and we know where it was. We know, you know on which days it was fired. We know that um, Travis ordered it fired on the first day of the siege and so that has a bit of a, well, it's kind of famous as a cannon. And so everybody hoped it was that. But uh, working with uh, someone who's been doing research on Alamo Cannon, that gun was lost, it was taken to San Pedro Park, and then disappeared. The largest cannon at the Alamo is an interesting cannon. And there is a lot of controversy as to whether it's an 18 pounder or whether it's a 16 pounder. And it gets very interesting when you start doing the calculations. You measure the diameter of the bore at the muzzle and then you go in 12 inches and you measure the diameter again and you measure again at 18 inches in. And you try and get an average diameter for the bore to calculate what size cannonball was fired out of the cannon. Now when we talk about a cannon being a six pounder, what that means and that is the diameter of the ball that was fired you take the weight of that ball, it weighs six pounds. So, you know the diameter is going to be so many inches. 
So if you take an 18 pound ball, you figure out the diameter that is needed to fire that ball. Now, according to the British Book of Regulations, an 18 pounder is about 5.3 inches in diameter. Now, the cannon barrel we have is about 5.19, 5.2 inches, which is less than an 18 pounder. But when you take a cannonball that's the correct diameter and you measure the weight of it, it's actually heavier than 18 pounds. So if you took an 18 pound cannonball exact, it would probably fit down the 5.2 inches. But you also have to take care of windage. And windage is the difference between the diameter of the ball that you're firing and the diameter of the barrel. So I'm going to exaggerate. That is the inside of your barrel. That's the diameter of the ball. The gap at the top right over here, for argument's sake, is 1 or 121 of the barrel diameter. That's the windage. So do we have a 16 pounder or do we have an 18 pounder? Well, at 5.19 inches, it's a very tight 18 pounder. It could be an 18 pounder, but it's more likely to be a 16 pounder. But it's a wonderful opportunity for the lab to work with the Alamo. It's a cooperative agreement. And the lab wanted to do the project because to us, it's a win-win situation. The Alamo is very important to the people of Texas. And artifacts are very important to the lab. We like conserving artifacts. And one of the mantras of the lab is preserving our past for our future. The Alamo's got some cannon, they want them cleaned. We like cleaning cannon, please can we do it for you? At the same time, we're teaching students. The students learn to clean valuable artifacts and we all grow from it.